Today about multi-story car park, um, our hybrid wood, concrete and steel building system. So first I want to give you a short insight to the company. Um, so it's a family company um, founded 1906 and we buy a window factory uh, with and carpentry in 1945. That was the beginning of the uh, Ernie AG Holzbau from the timber part of the company and 1950 we realizes first systems buildings in wood that means that we build some containers very small containers and ship it uh, uh, all over the world at the end so 1965 that was the foundation of Ernie AG Holzbau so we split the company in a concrete one and a timber one um, today um, yeah it's uh yeah, we have some robot installed so the yeah beginning of the digitalization and in industrial automatization at the end it was 1995 so we developed the first industry specific room solution that means modules 3d um, um containers 3d modules 3d yeah 3d rooms for uh, hospitals for schools for offices 2009, we installed the largest multifunctional bridge. And 2040, we start with uh, Europe's largest gantry robot. There's, uh, on the picture, you see the gantry robot who built uh, something for the Rob Ach at 2018. And 2018, we uh, have set up our first KUKA, 240 robot for prototyping. And 2019, the fourth generation come into the company. And 2021, so I hope in May, uh, we can set up our second KUKA car 240 robot so that we can you know, build some cool things with a collaboration of two, two robots. So uh, you see uh, in a video before, I hope the parametric facade, and in this there are two robots working together and build the facade. And there was a small one and a big one. Uh, no, now we have uh, two, two KUKA, two same KUKA, so we can build bigger things. Uh, yeah, bigger, cool things, cool facade elements or wall elements or whatever. Um, so, Ernie Hage Holzboer, the timber part, today have 305 employees. The turnover is 135 million Swiss franc. We have different size sites in uh, in switzerland and uh, in the french speaking area of switzerland also in germany nearby uh, cologne um, so it's around about six six hours to to drive with the car and the factory area is uh, a little bit more than 100,000 square meters yeah and uh, yeah the timber company is uh, part of a, of a group a holding so we have three main parts in the holding, that is the construction above and below ground. Uh, this the, the mother company, Erne AG Bauunternehmung. And that is the concrete part. We have our own concrete um, company who, who uh, mix the concrete, keys on beton. Um, and we have also decon, that means uh, yeah, special, special things. Um, um, and um, yeah, pipes so we can build all the pipes below ground by ourselves. Then we have the timber construction and civil engineering with the uh, Ernie Holzbau. We have uh, Germany, uh, one small company, and also Husner AG, that is the typical carpentry company. So we are more the uh, prefabricate uh, element company, and the Husner is the traditional uh, carpentry. Company. And then we have uh, some real estate companies. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the whole holding. Um, in the in the group, uh, we have around about 1,000 employees um, working in different uh, parts of the companies. So uh, what we also do is. Um, yeah, BIM is is not. Um, uh, what can I say about BIM? BIM, yeah, the digital workflow we have. It's it's like a BIM. So we 
create a digital twin and use this for the publication. Um, so we have, uh, we need digital data for the robot um, and we do some research and development um, for the prototyping with different robots. Um, we have the multifunctional bridge. They, this also needs digital data. So um, in all of our yeah, parts of the company, in the, in the wooden window part, also in the timber part, we need digital data. We need 3D models. So that is the base of, of all our work. Uh, that we that we create good data in a 3D model. So the next one is uh, individual solutions based on uh, material independent construction method. That means that we can use all the material normally you use for buildings. That means concrete, that means steel, that means timber, that means glass, um, up to the quantity one, um, and what we also can is a guarantee quality uh, why we use industrial fabrication or why we do it. And that means at the end that the high degree of prefabrication reduces the complexity on site. So our thinking is do a lot of work in the company, in the production hall and not on site. Uh, on site you have the weather, you have cold, you have rain, and you have maybe too warm and yeah, that is uh, and so so that that is the yeah you know, uh, how kind of the goals behind the company uh, reduce the complexity on site bring most of the work into the company in the production hall so that is that is behind us so um, now I come to the ANA multi-story car park system um, this is a hybrid system with different materials concrete steel and wood it's a combination of this. Um, can be built uh, up to four floors or more that uh, belongs to the steel columns, to the size of these columns. Uh, the grid is uh, in this uh, system 2.5 meters by 16 meters. The park field is 2.5 by 5 meters and the road between the lane um, is uh, have a, a width of six meters to drive through. So that is uh, the system. But uh, the story behind the idea is important to know, though the company grows from 2004 with 116 employees up to 300 employees in 2020. So, and yeah, most of them come with their own car. And that means you see the picture um, here. So most of them uh, parking in the field um, and yeah, more and more employees means more and more cars and more and more space that we have to give them for the parking. And um, after three times expanding of the parking fields, the government says, hey, um, do not use so much ground for only for parking. Um, so please build a car park. And the other reason is um, that, we, that we want to build a car park is that we can use the ground for new productions. Uh, yeah, so. Um, you see it uh, here. Though this was the beginning of of the of the Energie Holzbau in Stein. Then we expand with this hall. Then we expand here. Then we built the office here. And this is the new car park. And this area now is free. And we install a tent in the first way that we can use this ground for production. Yeah, that is uh, the story behind. And then we go uh, on and search systems that you can use. The first idea was, hey, let's build a car park all in wood. We are a wooden company, we are a timber company, so let's, let's build it in wood. Uh, we have some experience uh, with uh, multi-story buildings, with beach, and in this uh, we say, okay, let's build our first car park uh, in wood and in beach. Beach is a very cool, uh, uh, wood and yeah it's a, high, it's a high level wood uh yeah but then we see oh shit too much expensive so uh, we have different problems you need a roof for this to protect the the wood you need facade elements to protect the wood so and all these parts raise up the price for this and beach is not so cheap um at at the moment and it's yeah uh, and all this 
<laughs> in, in combination that, okay, that's too much expensive, that does not work for us. So then we say, okay, we have a concrete company in the, in the holding, in the group, that we say, okay, build in concrete by ourselves. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like this, it's, it's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's only concrete. <laughs> but also this was too expensive. Uh, at this time. So let me say, okay, what can we do? Um, we need a cheap one, we need the system, we need, we want to have a prefabricated system. Okay, um, no concrete, no wood, then go to steel, then we can buy it. And then we find this, um, the third one, a cheap steel car part, uh, standard, it's a system, it's prefabricated, it's not so nice, um, but it's functional. So we say, okay, that's enough for us. We want to, we don't want to spend so much money in, in the car park. It's only for our own workers. It's not an official building. So, okay, let's build it in steel. After some discussion, um, we say, but is this right? So, and then we say, okay, the price is okay. The system is okay. It's prefabricated. Okay. But the question was, why we are not able to build this system with wood. We are a timber company. We want to implement some wood in, in our car park. And what is the easiest way to bring some wood into these car parks? So that was the discussion we start. And after a few weeks, I guess, uh, we find the solution very easy. Um, yeah, there was a, a, a steel system car park from Goldbeck. And that looks very, very cool. So it's a split level and we have uh, staircases, the, the white one, we have the ramps inside. So we said, okay, this can be a system that we can use. Um, from this, we go the next step. And the next step is, okay, let's analyze uh, how this system is working. You see the steel beam in the top, you have the column and we have a span with 16 meters, a width from 2.5 up to 2.7 meters, and the height, uh, a free, yeah, uh, height for the cars is round about 2.10 uh, meters. So that was um, the, the beginning of, of uh, thinking about, yeah, let's talk about the cheap um, steel car park and how can we implement some wood. And then when we see this picture, we say, okay, let's eliminate the steel beam, the big steel beam between these two columns with a span of 16 meters with a wooden beam. So, and that's, that's very easy. So on the, on the right, you see the steel beam and with the concrete on it, uh, with the connection between the steel beam and the concrete. And on the left, you see the, the timber beam and the same system on top with the concrete. So it can be so easy. So, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's really not so easy. So uh, the first thing is how can we connect um, the timber to the concrete? And then we say, okay, we have our own system that's from TimberTech, um, the connection with the metal sheet uh, in the glued into the, the beam, in the wooden beam and uh, um, yeah, go into the concrete. Um, and, but then that, that is the connection. But what, what we see is that there are more and more problems to solve um, with when you eliminate or replace the steel beam with the wooden beam. So um, then the next is the cross section. So here see you the, the wooden beams span with 16 meters. So what we have done is uh, give them an angle with 2.5% that the uh, rain water flows uh, over the park decks to the outer columns. So that means the rain uh, flows like this, and then we can grab it um, and bring it uh, down to the earth in a very easy way. So it looks very angled, but in reality, it's, it's, it's really very, very uh, easy to, to, to walk or to drive in. So we have um, six uh, layers. This is the first layer, and we have the second, the third, the four, the fifth, and the sixth. So we have six layers for the parking or six parking decks. These are on the ground at the end, and these are 
on the wooden beams or the wooden park decks or how can you say then then we have the staircases um for going down so that was uh, the first idea and then the big problem uh, began so yeah this is a picture so it uh, today how it looks like it's yeah it, it works but yeah we have to solve some problems not so easy problems so in in all the discussion and all this development of our par car park we see that we have the problem how can we protect the end of the wooden beam in steel it's not a problem so steel is uh, waterproof um, you can paint it you can uh, yeah bring a, a, a cover on it whatever uh, but the wood we have some problems what's about the end of the wood how does the how can we protect the end from the water so the solution we found is that we have to create a connection that can protect the end of the beam and can transfer all the forces from the beam into the column that's a combination of this detail um, so this is a visualization of these details and here are the details i come back to this detail in a later uh, slide we solve it but it's it's not so easy though we have done some tests that we find out how does it work um, and the other one is that that we bring the water uh, from from this uh, to this, and then we have to grab this also in in this end nearby this connection. So that's that's not so easy to do that, but uh, yeah, we have solved it. So this is the real. It's, it's a picture from this. Um, what you see is that we have a steel plate here. And the beam is laying on the steel plate. So there's a, there's a steel or steel plate also in the beam. You see this uh, knots, no, it's not knots, dowels, dowels uh, that fix. It's uh, this beam to this, uh, to this steel part, to this connection. It's only for the construction. The main forces go uh, about the steel inside uh, to this plate. Uh, to this base plate directly into this steel part and is connected with these screws to the column. So uh, what we have done at the end, you see a little gap between the steel plate and the end of the beam. And this is round about one centimeter and one centimeter means that water can dry out. If they're coming uh, in some water that we can dry and so the, the end of the beam is protected. And this steel plate is a little bit, bit um, wider than the beam is. Uh, and that means that if you get some rain from outside from here, so also this end is protected uh, with this steel plate. I go back. So you, you see it here a little bit. So you see that the two steel blades in the beam and you see the, the wider steel blade at the end that is, uh, yeah, stands a little bit out of this um, surface from the beam. And so the, the end is protected. So that was the solution. And what we see today, it works really good. Uh, it's functional. It's very easy, easy for assembly. You only, um, yeah, you can assemble this steel part or connect it with this uh, screws, um, hanging this beam on the crane. This is pre-assembled uh, on the beam. And you stick in the first screw and uh, yeah so it's assembled in a very easy way so the other one is protect the wood on the top um, so by concreting on side uh, we have to protect the wood surface on the top um, um, why have we do that normally what what we we see the the connection between the the wood and the concrete this is the TCOM tech system and then normally the uh, filigree slab is laying on this in the half of this surface or in this distance from this metal sheet to the end of the beam. And then we bring on the concrete on site. And that means that the liquid of this concrete goes directly to this wood. And though we have to protect this wood, and what we have done is uh, bring on a liquid plastic waterproof layer on it also in in the construction side or in the company uh, who um, 
uh, built or well, yeah, uh, produce these beams. They glue in also the uh, these metal sheets and bring on this this layer in the in the factory. So what we get is a prefabricated beam with this uh, steel plates and the liquid layers or this liquid plastic waterproof layer. So the other one uh, is that we need. Um, yeah, the flooring of this park deck uh, is should or should be a one static or one static panel. So that we have to hold this together. It's prefabricated, so you you see these these gaps here and here and here. So we have every 2.5 meter a gap, and yeah, the the solution we say is that we need. Um, a flooring that we can, or we need to build a flooring as a pressure plate in the longitudinal direction of the beam over 16 meters. So that is done by the wood concrete composite with this uh, glued um, uh, metal sheets. Um, and in the other direction, in the cross direction, we have to bring in a preload as a multi spin girder, girder, I don't know, um, over 78 meters. So and we also have some gaps between, so we have to bring in some special FRP reinforcements for crack preventation. So that is that is not so easy to do. So in this case, we need uh, the knowledge of our concrete uh, sister, of our concrete company that helps us uh, helps helps us uh, to find a good solution, and also the the mixture of these concrete. Um, it's a special one, um, not so, yeah, it's a, it's a more flexible one um, because we have um, shrinkage of the wood. We have the, um, I don't know the word, it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of, of uh, cars are, uh, are driving on this park deck. Uh, all the park deck is swinging a little bit. And that's not so easy to handle. In steel or with the concrete, it's it's easy. But in the wood um, part with 16 meter span, the wooden beam is 16 meter span. That means that it's swinging a lot. And so uh, for this uh, crack protection or crack preventation, you need a special um, yeah, mixture of concrete. So, And the blue lines are these preload cables that you bring in over the seven, seven, eight meters, 78 meters to, to build a, a whole static panel over the whole park deck. So um, some data about our um, car park, the car park system has a common grid with 2.5 by 16 meters, like the classic steel car park system. The parking lot is 2.5 by 5 meters today. We have a driving lane with six meter wide. Um, we have a wood concrete composite deck spanned uh, over 16 meters as a single span girder. girder so uh, uh, the supports and steel construction. So that means yeah, water protection is guaranteed. So that does not, uh, it's not a big problem. Um, we have a very easy uh, railway installed. Um, then we have, uh, yeah, fire protection, uh, the object specific concept we have done, and the beams and the ceilings are calculated in 30 minutes. So that means uh, uh, R30 uh, means 30 minutes. So that can can uh, be in a fire with 30 minutes, and then nothing should be happen. Uh, but yeah, we don't know why, but the steel construction in 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 in, uh, in Switzerland or in Germany is non flammable and then you have no requirement for this, so that's zero minutes. So um there was a big discussion normally in, in Switzerland to say steel does not need some um yeah fire resistance with in minutes, but if, when you uh, build a, a parking uh, deck with completely in wood, you need 60 minutes. So, so in the discussion with the, with the government, uh, we reduce this to 30 minutes. So yeah, and at least um, the loads uh, according to the SCR 261, that's a, a local um, norm, a local document 
uh, inclusive um, impact loads. That means that if a car uh, bumps uh, to the, the column or whatever, if there's uh, an accident or something, that it's included, uh, so that uh, that uh, does not, uh, yeah, that have no impact of these in in uh, into the car park. So, yeah, the top concrete. That means that the concrete on site. Um, and yeah, the wood concrete composite element um, is a combination of the wooden beam and the concrete. So at the end, we have 13 centimeters concrete slab made of this special concrete. And we have a five centimeter precast slab that is the filigree slab. I hope that is right. And eight centimeters on top, uh, we bring in on side. So the concrete slab spans over 16 meters with the timber beam direction as a compression slab in wood concrete composite element. And uh, in the other direction, we have 78 meter meters as a multi-span girder, each 25 meter span, so in concrete. And that is important. Normally you have a waterproof system on these concrete. So with this special concrete we bring in uh, on site, we do not need uh, a waterproofing system. So we have no flat waterproofing system as asphalt or OS8 to 12 system. So that is the difference and that yeah reduces the costs a little bit. Or what can I say? The the costs we need for the preload um is given by the yeah by the reducing um or yeah um so we do not need the, the waterproof system on top of the concrete. So we use this money for the preload. So that is the right uh, message. So at the end, it's a it's a it's a zero calculation about the whole building. Um, yeah, this is the floor plan. So we have uh, three staircases, two on the on the end of the of the car park decks. This this one. And at the end, this one, and then we have uh, one on the side. Um, this is the only one on this side. We cannot uh, install one because there's a big, uh, yeah, there's a gap that uh, yeah, so goes down a little bit more than uh, than normal. And uh, car parks under these uh, in the con concrete hall. So that is. Uh, then you see the ramp in the middle. These are these two are the ramps. Um, this is uh, a fuse from the in the back. And here you see uh, why we do not have a staircase. Here you see the staircase on the one side and the other side we have a concrete hall be, uh, under under this uh, parking uh, deck because there's a company uh, who rent this, who need this. So we build it together with this uh, concrete um, or with this uh, car park. Um, the gross section uh, you see, uh, and the length and um, the longitudinal section. And what I can say is that each deck has around about 50 parking uh, slots. Hey, what's about my camera? Hello. Oh, yeah, oh, it's good. Um, and in summary, we have around about 300 places for cars in this uh, car park. And we can um, yeah, bring on two more stories. Uh, for this construction, for this uh, dimension of the columns for the system, so that we can raise it up to 600 uh, parking places. So that is the our car park. So this is the some detailing to this. Here you see the uh, the connection from the the timber beam to the steel column. You see the the static um, yeah the statical system um, and this is the the top of the beam so the water flows down to the end of the beam to the bottom of the beam and here you see also the rain uh, drainage it's also the yeah yeah that we grab it here and bring it into the column and then goes down and here you see the the dowels you see the the plate the base plate you see some screws um, and the connection to the to the steel column, so I can send you this presentation as a PDF so that you have uh, more details for that. Um, so 
Um, yeah, these are the prefabricated beams we ordered by a supplier. Um, the steel parts are assembled in the factory, and also you see it a little bit, the steel uh, parts is, are glued also in, and the liquid plastic waterproof layers also uh, finished on this beam. So uh, the first we do in the assembly is that we do a lot of concrete work for the foundation and all the walls we need uh, without the ramps and the park decks. That is, uh, yeah, the park decks are the next step, and then the ramps uh, are the, the at the end. So then we install the steel trusses you see here for the statical stabilization of the whole construction. And then we hang in or bring in the steel beams, uh, the wooden beams, sorry, <laughs> with the system TICOM tech, with this, uh, you see the, the steel plates glued in, you see the multi, uh, the liquid plastic waterproof layer and also some compressible tape on it. So that when we lay on the filigree, a slab on this so that makes it sure that no liquid come out to these beams from uh, concreting on site. So here you see the filigree slab laid on these beams. You see uh, 2.5 meters from gap to gap. This is the brief applicated slab and this is filled in with the uh, top concrete and then we have the connection uh, to the wood concrete composite element. Here you see the blue cables, the blue cables, the preload cables over the whole length of the car park with 78 meters. That's the multi-span girder in cross direction. And here you see the concrete on side. You see the, here the, the normal uh, filigree slab with the blue cables and the reinforcement. Let me bring on uh, the concrete on side and they are finish also in one step the whole surface for that. One stage uh, of this concreting means that we um, yeah concrete or concreting also yeah two parking slots at the end so it means five meters um, that we can do it. So yeah the staircases on the side and on the uh, beginning and the end of the park deck. It's a normal steel staircase. It's, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's a normal normal one. Everybody can do that. It's, yeah, it's a system. And here are the, the drive up ramps. On the right, you see this on the ground. It's the first one to go on the top. And this is the, the one between the wooden decks. And so it's, it looks, it looks cool, um, yeah, and it works. There's a, a view into the parking deck with the parking slots um, and uh, the wooden beams. The whole deck with the parking uh, slots on the left and on the right and with the six meters lane between. And you see the, the, the ramp to go down. And these are the connection details on the top and on the bottom. So are the same details with uh, the angle of 2.5% um, here. And at the end, I built a picture <laughs> um, from the back uh, staircase and yeah, from the inner view um, to a staircase. So that is uh, that means that nobody should park here. This is the yeah the safety way at the end to to go that everybody can go to the staircase. And here you see um, um, it's uh, yeah that we have different heights of these parking decks. And that is the the top one of the left, and that is the the top one from the right uh, part of the car park. Yeah. And one ramp is only going half of the height uh, between. Um, so it's it's very easy, or yeah, the the angle in in the ramp um, is not so so big. So it's it's yeah. So we tested with 
with different uh, cars that we find the right angle. We test some uh, parking decks uh, around our area to look how does it work with, with, uh, with the normal cars and how big should the gap between these two decks at the end that we can implement uh, uh, a functional ramp. So that was uh, my presentation about the, the park deck that we have developed a little bit by ourselves. We have uh, solved a lot of problems. So the first idea was uh, build it in wood, too expensive, build it in concrete, also too expensive. And um, then we say, okay, let's make it cheap. Uh, look at the steel construction steel system. And then we say, okay, how can we bring in some more wood? And we eliminate or replace the main beam in steel with a, a wooden beam. And yeah, that brings a lot of, uh, yeah, um, how can I say a lot of problems is the wrong word, it's, but we have to develop new connections, new a mixer of uh, concrete, uh, made some uh, preload, multi-span plates, um, and that is the development we bring in into this construction. And at the end, we have, a, I guess, a cool uh, car park system with a, a combined material with concrete, steel, and timber. And what I can say to the zero or to the emissions of uh, this building is that the concrete slab, the wood concrete composite slab, uh, is near to uh, zero emission. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Thomas, for that. And uh, David, I'd like to now uh, pass over to you. Okay, well, uh, hello, everybody. Um, great to be here. It's good to be again uh, doing a webinar for Wood Solutions. Um, those of you who uh, may already know me you, from the days that I worked with Wood Solutions, um, great to be back. And those who don't, uh, very quickly, uh, as, a, as Andrew mentioned earlier, I am an architect, um, but uh, I went back to university a few years back now and decided to uh, improve my understanding of opportunities for timber and multi-storey construction. Um, so I spent uh, some time in Sweden looking at the way uh, they were building things there and um, the PhD looked at uh, applying the technologies and the developments uh, in Northern Europe uh, and seeing how they might fit into Australia. So I think that uh, example that we've just seen there from Thomas is, um, is really very, very impressive. And it's typical, I think, of the types of projects that um, we can look at and get inspiration from. And the key really is, is how do we transfer that across to the Australian context? Um, so, let me just move on to my next slide. So I think the answer is uh, categorically yes, it is possible to build uh, a car park in timber here in Australia. Uh, that being said, I've spent now the last probably two, two and a half years investigating this. Um, I started up a company called uh, EnviroPark uh, with a business partner. And um, the EnviroPark's purpose was to develop a structural timber system for multi-storey timber car parks. Um, and uh, as we began that journey, we discovered that there was also an opportunity for solar powered uh, shade structures for broad acre car parks. So we actually had the two streams running in parallel for a period. Um, a short while back, we decided to um, actually uh, separate those two. So now EnviroPark will take takes care of uh, opportunities for solar car park structures using a timber structure. And my consulting business, Timber Consult, now looks after the multi-storey car parks. So there are five key considerations that I'd like to run through with you today. Um, the first one is just a quick look at structural capacity and systems of timber and what's appropriate. Uh, to utilise in a car park street, uh, structure. The second one is looking at the codes, and opportunities and constraints within our Australian design codes. And, and obviously with any building, uh, it's in paramount that you have a good understanding of this aspect of it. Um, and I find as I talk to people about not just car parks for the matter, but if we're looking at car parks now, 
there's actually a lot of misunderstanding or assumptions that are carried over from one building type to another around what you can and can't do. So hopefully we'll be able to um, look at a bit more in detail and maybe bust a few myths. The third thing, of course, with, with any timber project being um, innovative construction methods, something that we're uh, uh, largely not familiar with in our um, timber supply and our construction systems, is the consultant team. So I'll quickly run through the key people that I think are important. Supply chain, it's all very well to come up with fantastic timber design, but if the supply chain isn't up to fulfilling uh, the elements or supplying those elements, then of course, um, that's going to cause problems. And I've seen over the last couple of years, the supply chain start to change. Um, opportunities that I thought may have developed in one area haven't, but then others have come through in other places. So it's important to keep up to date with the supply chain. And finally, I'll talk about public perceptions. So structural capacity and systems. First one is looking at your structural grid. So of course, um, multi-storey timber car parks um, come uh, with a sort of standardised grid that we're familiar with already for our steel and concrete car parks. And it's important to recognise that when you're dealing with timber, uh, the section sizes will be different to the ones that you might be more familiar with with steel or concrete. Sometimes uh, the beams might be deeper, and I think we saw a really good example of that uh, with the Ernie um, car park. Uh, he showed, I think, a cross-section there of the original steel concept, and right next to it was the, was the timber one, and you can see the depth of the timber beams was deeper. So columns and beams as well. Um, our opportunities here in Australia from a timber perspective is either glue lamb or LVL. Um, and, uh, and also I'll point out that I think there is merit in the idea of utilising steel uh, in some elements of a multi-storey car park because of its properties. And I like to stick to the principle, I suppose, is the right material for the right application. So when you're looking at doing a car park and you think, can it be in timber? Be prepared to look at uh, steel as well and include that in the mix and develop effectively a hybrid solution. I think um, we'll end up easing the process through and end up with the best outcome. With respect to the decking, um, so we, we obviously have CLT, which I imagine most people uh, listening today will be familiar with CLT, or the timber concrete composite. It was great again to see that earn timber concrete composite solution. Um, the, the technology in Australia for TCC uh, systems is actually improving quite a bit of, uh, of late. There are a couple of buildings up around Australia now which uh, utilise TCC systems. And um, certainly in an area where you've got hard wearing uh, surfaces that need to be hard wearing like a car park, the concrete can uh, bring benefits to the solution both around working in composite action with the timber, but also as a wearing surface. Um, as I mentioned before, columns, uh, I think there is some merit in looking at steel for the external columns from a weathering perspective, um, but it's going to depend on the architectural design and the, the degree of screening or protection that you can apply to the external columns as well. And then there's the core. Um, yes, CLT potentially could act uh, to, uh, to build the core, but if there are the considerations that concrete might be appropriate material as well. Um, the ramps, timber or steel, um, with the solution in timber, it's going to be highly prefabricated. Um, so it is possible to prefabricate as a cassette, both the floor panels and the ramps. Um, but I'm aware of a couple of projects, uh, multi-storey timber car parks around the world that have utilised steel in the ramps and timber and other elements. And of course, the trafficable services. Um, we think of CLT as a material that we generally want to express or it's popular to express. Um, but obviously you, it's not uh, suitable to be driven on. Um, so your options is either concrete, whether it be just a screed over the CLT um, or in working in composite action as we've just seen, or there is another alternative. There is a number of polyurethane products which can be poured on top of the CLT. And I've got an example of that later on in the presentation. And then uh, I was also glad to see Thomas talking about impact resistance and the consideration of that on the columns. So um, that's an important consideration. And uh, so when you're looking at your design, it's uh, critical to consider uh, 
uh, especially key columns in certain locations where there might be additional protection required, or you possibly may decide to swap that one out for a steel solution. All right, so moving on to the next section, codes um, when the opportunities and constraints are near. Now this is quite technical and I only had 15 minutes to, to, uh, to talk today, so I'm gonna be reasonably quick. So let's jump straight to the case. If you go to spec C 1.1, it talks about the fire resisting construction that's required in type A construction. So a multi-story car park, of course, is a class 7A building. And normally class 7A buildings in the code require 120 minutes uh, fire protection for columns and beams and, and walls and the like. But uh, within the uh, NCC, um, there is a, a number of sections which give concessions for car parks which apply to an open deck or a sprinkled car park. And in essence, as you can see from that um, table there, the highlighted green areas show the elements where there is a concession where that uh, FRL has been reduced from that 120 minutes down to 60 minutes. This is a key consideration around timber because if you're uh, expecting to use char, for example, to protect the timber to achieve the FRL, if you've halved the um, FRL period, that's going to reduce the volume of timber, the redu reduction in the fibre, if you like. And that's quite important because that can reduce cost um, and, uh, and make the timber solution far more attractive. It's also worthwhile pointing out that not all car parks need to meet this, these requirements. These are reason, still reasonably stringent, depending on the height of the car park. So as you know, type uh, A, B or C construction has different FRL requirements. So type B construction, if your car park's only three levels, um, <clears throat> floors, ramps, and the roof elements only so going to need to go down to 60 minutes. I don't need any FRL at all. And type C construction, um, there's also a reduction there. That's another one and two stories. <clears throat> so it's well worthwhile investigating what requirements you actually need to meet before you get too carried about by what the solution is. <clears throat> so the consultant team. It's really important with any timber build in the Australian um, building and design environment that the team, all the team must be on board with the timber solution. My days with Wood Solutions really demonstrated this. If uh, people don't understand what the purpose of the timber is, what the benefits it brings and what their role in the project is around understanding timber, its opportunities and its constraints, you're going to have a lot of difficulty getting the project up. So, of course, the architect, structural engineer, the fire engineer, the building surveyor and the building certifier would be the core people that need to understand and need to be on board with the timber solution. <clears throat> so, the supply chain. I've only got a couple of minutes left, so I'll move fairly quickly. If you've already tried to get a timber building up, a multi-storey timber building, you'll know that there is an emerging supply chain domestically and currently some significant challenges internationally. Challenges uh, as a result of um, uh, constraints in the supply chain through shipping and also demand in other countries means that where we may have gone to an international solution to supply the columns and beams in the past, that presents challenges around fluctuation in the Aussie dollar, uh, restrictions on transport and shipping. But the domestic supply chain is now finally starting to get some legs, if you like. Um, uh, there are a number of uh, prefabricators around Australia now which are gearing up to supply large section timber elements. There is increased knowledge around um, what, let's get my time again here what can be supplied locally. So it's important to understand that. And if you don't know who and where to get the timber from, I would highly recommend you engage uh, a specialist consultant to help you. And Wood Solutions will be a great place to start. And of course, you can come and talk to me and there are others available. Fibre type, by that I mean, I mean softwood or hardwood, um, which is going to be the best application. They both have different properties around char and their ability to span and also the costs. And the other key thing to understand is the fabrication capacity. Uh, it's all very well to get the fibre, but if you can't find a prefabricate, prefabricator capable of um, processing that wood, uh, doing the detailed design and delivering to site, then you're going to have uh, a number of challenges. 
So finally, public perceptions. What you're looking at here is the first multi-storey timber car park that I'm aware of in the world. And as now, let's see, it's got to be nearly 10 years old now. This is in a northern town called Sheleftio, and it's called the Ikorin Multi-Storey Timber Car Park. Um, you can see the picture on the right-hand side there externally. It's an open deck car park with very large uh, eaves to protect the timber. This is an area of Sweden that gets a lot of snow and a lot of bad weather, so uh, good timber design there. But internally, you can see that uh, the timber is expressed and it's a real feature of it. The question is, is how will people perceive this? Is this something that they're willing to um, accept and be comfortable in parking, or is this going to present additional challenges? Now, it's a beautiful structure, as you can see there, but looking at that, there's actually a number of details in it which are specifically uh, dealing with the timber. One is it's got uh, what it looks like a concrete deck. In fact, that is um, not concrete, but it's an epoxy deck. And also where the cars are parked, you can see that there is a white ceiling panels. That's the fire protection. So if there was a fire and a car was to catch a light, that's providing the fire protection for the structure above. And the timber elements themselves, the columns and beams, are sized with char in mind to allow them to, to maintain their, their time uh, as required in their codes. So, uh, Andrew and everybody else, thanks for listening. That's the end of my presentation. Uh, I know it was short and sharp. Hopefully you've got something out of that. If you've got any more questions, feel free to send them through to Andrew now. We'll do our best to answer them. Otherwise, my contact details are on the screen. Thank you, David. That's a, a brilliant presentation and, and very much put it in a strong context. So uh, uh, I'll just take back the PowerPoint and uh, I'm just going to flip it off. But we're available to ask any questions to anybody. The, Questions. I have, I've answered most of the questions as we as we've gone through the uh, uh, the UNA talk. Um, the only comment I can probably make is uh, the, about fire, which I alluded to start. The, the UNA car park did have a fire in it. A vehicle did catch on fire, and uh, it wasn't. Uh, it was quickly put out, and and the effect on the structure is a, a little part of the um, timber beam has now got a Japanese char char look to it but had no consequence to the structure. So good to have a, an actual, a real real, uh, real fire test within the building and it's worked, worked well. So this, uh, just completing, I think I've got no other questions coming through. So we'll, we'll now, and it's just one minute away from the uh, 12 o'clock, so we'll just wrap it all up. Just a reminder of the CPD, CPD questions uh, and just to give you a bit of hint what the answers were. The first question is beam. Was a mass timber product used in it? It was a spruce glue lamp. And the fire resistance period for the uh, for the slab and, and beams was 30 minutes. So if anybody wants to quickly write them down. So just a reminder that these uh, webinars will be up, uploaded to the Wood Solutions website, and uh, we will we will uh, uh, have this one up in a few days' time. And uh, this certificate and CPD CPD uh, questions will also be sent out to you uh, soon after this uh, closure of this seminar webinar. Sorry, and uh, please retain it for your own for your own use. Uh, within that, in that sorry, within that um, uh, sent out form will be a survey point. So we please ask you to 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 do the survey because it helps us formulate new webinars and for you. So in in closing, I'd like to thank the speakers uh, David and Thomas, and uh, and to also now to to talk about the next webinar, which is on the 27th, Tuesday, 27th of April, and that's looking at prefabricated timber systems currently current state of mid-rise in Sweden, which must be something David's very close to. So the, uh, actually, so I'm actually presenting at that one as well, Andrew. I, I, there you I, go. I'm not sure if you realise that. But. No, I would have put you down as a presenter. So so uh, uh, I'm again, very keen to join that one because uh, Sweden by itself has probably got more high-rise or ma and more buildings. Uh, it's probably equivalent to the rest of the world in, in the number. So uh, they have half the number of high-rise buildings. And the last time I checked was about two years ago. So they really are doing well. So lots of lessons to be learned from them. So at this point in time, we're now at 12 o'clock. So I'd like to thank you for attending this, this webinar and uh, we'll see you at the next webinar. Thank you again for attending. Bye.